Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And after about, well, pretty much a week of Parliament, coming back after summer before Boris Johnson shut it down again for five more weeks, the Act has been uh, passed into law, which forces Boris Johnson to facilitate an extension, uh, a Brexit extension beyond October the 31st. Uh, nothing he can do about it now. That's not to say that if an EU council member wants to block it, that they can't. Of course they can, but it's unlikely that that will happen. Even France now is saying that they'd be up for a two year extension. And as I said on Twitter, it's fine by me. I still prefer a 99 year extension, but there you go, two years, that'll be fine in the meantime. So what are the latest schemes that Boris Johnson has to force through a no deal Brexit? Well, there are three that seem to be doing the rounds at the moment. So I want to go through just how insane each of them is. So the first one, <laughs> the first one is the double letter. The double letter. So the law states, and by the way, all, for all, you might be thinking of, of what various ministers have been saying over the last week, that seems to be dying a death now. Uh, they were all talking about the fact that they would just ignore the legislation. That's not really what they're saying at the moment. I, I think the situation now is that they've had their expert legal advice. They have been told that this is watertight, you know, that there is no wriggle room and there isn't. The Act was designed specifically knowing that Boris Johnson has scant regard for the law, scant regard for parliamentary conventions, scant regard for any of the structures of the United Kingdom. They knew they had to shackle him good and tight to get him to obey this law. They knew what they were doing. They get all the expert legal advice they required. You know, uh, for example, Dominic Raab, the, I can't even believe I'm saying this, the foreign secretary was saying, there's no way that Boris Johnson's going to negotiate an extension. Yeah, thanks for that, Mr. Rob. He doesn't have to. This act does not require him to do anything. Not a thing other than sign his name. We're not asking him to negotiate. We're asking him to request an extension. There is no negotiation. The act says we want one for January the 31st, please, 2020. But it also says but if the EU turns around and says, no, we're not messing about every few months. Here's a two year extension. The law still says that he has to accept it within two days. Doesn't even give him any leeway on how long he gets to think about it. Two days. And it's Parliament that votes to yay or excuse me, or yay or nay it. And they will vote to yay it, even if it were my silly 99 years. Although I don't think it's all that silly. But anyway, um, so Dom, yeah, absolute idiot. So the double letter scheme, what is this? So he accepts that he has to sign his name to the letter. He doesn't even have to write the letter. The Act of Parliament actually says what the letter should say in it. So a civil servant will bring the letter to him and he'll just sign it. That's all he has to do. They will then post it. His cunning plan is to put a letter, another letter in a second letter, which pretty much says, just kidding. So he thinks the first letter is requesting the extension and then the second letter is saying, but actually I don't want an extension. Now, as and this isn't just me saying this, it should be ludicrously obvious to everyone that this is a ridiculous scheme. Um, but you don't have to rely on me. You know, legal experts have actually been pointing out that the law is not stupid, that in actual fact, you can't have a situation where you do a thing because you're compelled by the law, but then do another thing. Uh, to to renege on it and it's all fine. It's not that the law is not stupid and it isn't in this case because technically if you put another letter in there then you're go you're you are still breaking that legislation because the legislation says what the exact wording should be. That means you don't add any it doesn't just mean you don't take away it means you don't add anything either. So yeah it is absolutely watertight. So the second letter would be an absolute nonsense. The only thing that the EU would do with that letter I mean, what do, I mean, that's the other thing as well. How stupid does he think the EU council members are? Do you think they're, they're going to look at it and go, oh, there's a letter here saying they want an extension. That's nice. Yeah, OK. Oh, there's another one that says, just kidding. Oh, they must not want an extension. If I know what this letter is going to say, and if I know what Parliament wants, and if I know that the law compels this imbecile to accept any extension that the other EU 27 members come up with, do I really think I'm going to be blown off course by this spurious letter that I also know about? Because if I, me, Phil Morehouse, if I know about it, 
I'm pretty sure that the various members of the EU Council know about it as well. I've just an inkling that they're in the know. So that one's dead in the water. Then there was another one. So this was John Redwood, who is, you know, a Tory politician. Uh, one of the more despicable ones, as you might imagine. And he was saying, oh, you know, and he's not a legal expert, by the way. And he was saying, um, oh, well, yeah, the thing about this law is, you know, it's not really like that. It's a bit different. It's not subject to, to sort of, you know, criminal law in the same sort of way. And again, as had to be pointed out by a senior barrister, Boris Johnson breaking the law here, the thing that sends him to prison, you know, he doesn't go to court charged with breach of this particular act. The, the criminal act will be, for example, uh, abuse in public office type charge. Um, it doesn't matter what the act is. You know, there are, there are the, the actual charge in court is well established and it, it comes with a prison term. And in fact, that's what basically all the legal experts have saying. If Boris Johnson defies this law, he can go to jail. He can be he can be imprisoned. And of course, if he's sent to prison for 12 months or more, then that means not only is he kicked out of the Commons as an MP just automatically, it doesn't mean to say he can never sit as an MP again, but he'd have to wait till he's finished his prison term, then come out and then wait for another general election and see if anyone will uh, you know, select him as their candidate. But it also means he's going to have a few questions to ask as a colleague of mine at work noted today, if everybody wants to visit another country, because a lot of countries are a bit sniffy about accepting people into their country, you know, if they've had a significant jail term in their own country. Uh, so, yeah, you might find, you know, visa applications, ask a few awkward questions of him. Then the third one. So the third one. Now, let's get this right here. We've got, I can't even believe I'm going through this. The Civil Contingencies Act 2004. People are thinking you can just use this and enact emergency legislation. Now, what this act is for, it, as the, it, you know, as I've just said, it's for an emergency. And it technically suspends the rule of law for about a month. But it's not like Donald Trump declaring an emergency at the border to, to divert military funds towards his wall. Boris Johnson, as Prime Minister, doesn't get to de define what an emergency is. The Act lays it out very specifically. And another thing, it's Parliament are involved in this as well. So he can't just enact this, you know, emergency protocol, suspend the law, which means, by the way, he wouldn't have to follow the Act of Parliament because Parliament itself has to be notified. Well, if it's prorogued, that means it has to be recalled as well. You know, so the Prime Minister doesn't just get to be a tin pot dictator for a month doesn't work like that. And again, this isn't just me reading it, although it seems fairly obvious to me. For example, you know, it defines emergency, just the very first part of it defines emergency. An event or situation which threatens serious damage to human welfare in a place in the United Kingdom. Well, a no-deal Brexit would do that. But given that the law is compelling them to seek an extension, the status quo is not going to do that. An event or situation which threatens serious damage to the environment of a place in the United Kingdom. Again, the status quo isn't going to do that. War or terrorism which threatens serious damage to the security of the United Kingdom. Well, it could be argued that a Boris Johnson premiership is an act of terrorism, uh, albeit political terrorism. But again, you know, he hasn't got time to start a war. Um, or invite some terrorists along as well. And again, you know, it, given that we've had both of these things and no prime minister, you know, even since 2004 and no prime minister has felt the need to, to use this act in this way, I'm going to think he's going to have to pretty much start a world war to do this. Um, and as no one at the moment is taking him seriously, it's doubtful whether he could even start a war. Uh, that's the serious situation there. So... It wouldn't qualify for an emergency. And as I say, even if he could somehow try and redefine the terms, Parliament has to be involved. He'd have to recall Parliament or, or the Queen would have to recall Parliament as well. Um, so that's not going to do him any good either. If he even attempted 
to say that this was his shield for disobeying the law. He'd go to court and the court would say no. Uh, and that is the other thing about what he's been doing. He's been trying to say as well he's going to test the law to the fullest. And the question at this point is how does he intend to test it? Because the way I would test it in his position is to order a judicial review right now. Get it tested in court now before it has to be enacted. Get a senior judge or panel of judges to say, right, if I don't sign this letter, am I breaking the law? And if so, how seriously am I going to go to prison? Let them decide that. I mean, I know what they're going to say because we've already had former Supreme Court judges having their say on this, as well as, as I say, senior barristers. You know, and, and this is the thing as well. The language has notably changed in the last 48 hours from Downing Street. We are now very much getting the sense, I think, that people have got through to Boris Johnson. They ain't getting away with it. Basically, reality has hit Boris Johnson full in the face in the last 168 hours, the last week. He has been smacked good and hard by reality. Um, so, although he'll carry on with his tough talking to a certain extent, it's now surprising that all these ministers that were saying we're not going to follow this legislation are now saying, of course, we're going to obey the rule of law. They're still trying to muddy the waters a little bit. But the bottom line is it's not going to be trial by public, trial by media. It'll be trial by the Supreme Court, uh, High Court, I suppose, in the first instance, then the Supreme Court, if he tries to go against this. And there is a prison term available in the sentencing if found guilty. So there is no way out of it. That is the bottom line. And this is why I was talking about recently the fact that Boris Johnson is basically buggered. No matter what happens, he is buggered um, because if he tries to take us out with no deal, he is going to break the law. This act does not have holes in it. That is the expert legal opinion of a whole raft of people that would know about these things. He obeys it which should he absolutely should in fact i wanted i was talking to my girlfriend tonight she was saying oh she hopes he breaks the law so we can go to prison i don't i hope that he follows it to the letter as he has to he can chunter as much as he likes and he can moan about how the fact he's been compelled to do it i don't care i don't care i want that letter being signed and i want it being sent off i want the public to see just where the power in this country really resides and it is in parliament I want the Prime Minister doing Parliament's bidding like a performing monkey in full view of the public. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see him break the law. It's no, it's scant reward to me to see him in prison. What good does that do me or anyone? No. I need to see him obey the law. We don't need a Prime Minister that breaks the law. We already have a Prime Minister that breaks the law, of course, but, you know, in such a public way as this. No, no thank you. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. Until next time, I'll see you later.